The gospel comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many, many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. In this reading, may we find the gospel of Christ. Praise the name of our God. And now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength, and O oh God, our Redeemer. And all of the people of God said, Amen. Amen. The title in the bulletin this morning is seeing in the darkness. But I think I want to change it. And maybe later to come back to this theme of dark and darkness. And to simply say to us this morning for just a few moments, seeing matters. Seeing matters. Turn and tell somebody sitting next to you, look at them, tell them, seeing matters. Turn and tell another person and, and say this, seeing matters really. I was in Washington, D.C. this past Friday. National City Christian Church for a conference and conversation on race and racism with our own Reverend Louis Alfredo and Peter Hetzel and Alan Harris, our new regional pastor in the capital area, and others from across the country and, and across this great church of ours, the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. The speaker to start the conference and conversation was a very good friend and colleague, William Lee of Roanoke, Virginia. And he started by talking to us about how often, as people of color, we know the experience of others not seeing us, looking past us, overlooking us, even before them, not really seeing our humanity. Bill Lee, for 38 years, pastor of the Loudoun Avenue Christian Church in Roanoke, Virginia, my first pastorate was there. It was where I met Tina there, my beloved. It was where life began for me there, 40 plus years ago. And Bill Lee, 38 years there as pastor of this congregation, tall, six feet two, commanding presence, articulate, smart, sharp, great preacher, and he shared with the group this past Friday in Washington, D.C., that he was invited to preach at a large downtown white congregation in Roanoke, Virginia. A couple of years ago, they invited him to preach. And it was a big deal. The first 
African-American pastor to be invited to this large, white, downtown, tall, steeple church in Roanoke, Virginia. The church was full. There was even news coverage of the event. And they invited him to preach again just recently. And the church was full, and it was a great experience. But afterwards, the pastor of the church said to him, Bill, have you ever preached here before? You've never preached here before, Bill, have you? Bill said he was taken back about it because he thought maybe the pastor was in the early stages of Alzheimer's or, or something, uh, you know, you know. And I mean, he was just there a couple of years ago, and it was no small event, same pastor, great experience, news coverage. Maybe it was some form of early dementia, or maybe the pastor, or maybe the pastor just didn't really see him had some kind of blinders on and just didn't really see him, didn't see this tall, articulate black man commanding presence, just didn't see him, maybe just couldn't see him. Bill said that's what he concluded. He concluded the pastor couldn't see him, did not have the capacity to see. And he said it irritated him and made him angry and made him, made him want to holler. He didn't feel any ill will or ill intent. It just felt disrespectful and disregarded and dismissive, and it made him want to holler. He said he thought about the many times he's been in a room and people have looked past him because they couldn't see him. They had blinders on and they couldn't see him. They, they couldn't see him. They, they, they saw others with him, but they never really saw him. And he said it made him want to holler. And as I sat there this past Friday and listened at this conference on race and racism, my own tape started rolling in the memory bank of my own experience. And I thought about the many times I've gone into a room, stepped into a space, and people really didn't see me. They couldn't see me. They, they looked right past me. I, I, you know, I'm not all of that in a bag of chips. I know, I know, I know. But I was standing there, all six feet five of me, and they looked past me. They didn't see me. They might have come even making an announcement, you know, trying to be magnanimous. I don't see color, and I'm thinking all the time, well, that's a lie. For, for don't you see, not to, not to see my color is not to see me. I'm hard to miss. I, I can't tell you the number of places and spaces I have gone to, even in big, blue, liberal, progressive New York City, and even in this little, beautiful, loving community called church where people look right past me and don't see me. And it sometimes makes you wanna holler. Sometimes it makes you wanna holler, to use Nathan McCall's words, black lives matter, black lives matter, black lives matter. They are those cowering back Drop the qualifier, all lives matter. Yes, they do, but our actions say all don't matter. Every day in this culture, every day in the news, every death, every suspicious circumstance surrounding the killing of another person of color, what happens on city streets and in communities of color every day say that black lives don't matter. Black lives don't matter and our young people are shouting in the streets. They are hollering with an exclamation point. Black lives matter. Not black lives matter too. As someone said to me the other day, just add a two on it. Just say black lives matter too. This tall, distinguished 
white woman said to me the other day, and it was be all right, you know, speaking out of her own white privilege and white fragility. We're going to talk about white fragility someday. But black lives matter. From Emmett Till to Eric Gardner, black lives matter. From Martin Malcolm and Mandela, black lives matter. From Trayvon Martin to millions of black faces we will never know, black lives matter. Sandra Bland to the Charleston Nine, black lives matter. Don't look past me, don't overlook me, don't you dismiss me, don't you disrespect me, black lives matter. But what I want to say to us this morning is that first and foremost, seeing matters. Before black lives matter, seeing matters. Before LBGTQ lives matter, seeing matters. Before women matter, seeing matters. Before children matter, seeing matters. Before the homeless matter, seeing matters. Before immigrants and refugees matter, seeing matters. Maybe the problem is we just don't see. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe we just don't want to see. Lord have mercy. I'm preaching up in here. Maybe we don't want to see, don't want to see. And this is what happened in this chapter of Mark's gospel, the story here of the blind man who could not see, but he could really see better than most. Bartimaeus is his name, and, and he wanted to see. He wanted to see real good. He could see better than anybody else in that story. Yes, he could. Though Bartimaeus is physically blind, he seems to be the only person in this story in the Gospel of Mark who actually sees. Uh, we read the story last week about the disciples who approach Jesus from a posture of hubris and show us clearly that they don't see straight. But he is a blind beggar who sees right good. <laughs> yes, he does. He approaches Jesus with a posture of complete humility. He asks for mercy. He, his approach to Jesus is a correction to the distorted discipleship of James and John. Bartimaeus desires to be freed from an affliction. He's not seeking authority or affluence. He's not seeking a seat or a title in the kingdom. This man, an outsider in society, usually overlooked in the community of humanity, dismissed and disrespected and dissed in every way. People order him to be quiet. Shut up, you out of order. Keep your mouth shut. You're making too much noise up in here. Don't you know this is an orderly service? Too much noise, too much fuss. But this man, is the model of Christian spirituality and true discipleship. <laughs> Bartimaeus is blind. The disciples try to mute him, but his sense of hearing is strong. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out so that Jesus could hear him. All he wanted to see. Uh, did, 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 don't, 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 don't tell me to shut up. I, I, I need to see. <laughs> Whatever it takes, I, I want to see. I don't know what he heard. I don't know if someone said something to Bartimaeus. I don't know if he heard the shuffle of Jesus' feet or the tone of Jesus' voice. I don't know if there was news coverage about Jesus, but Bartimaeus hears that it is Jesus. Without any mention of sound in the biblical text, he hears. And because he knows who Jesus is, he cries out loudly, noisily for mercy. He wants to see. It doesn't matter to Bartimaeus that Jesus is on a mission. Jesus is leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem in the midst of a large crowd to complete his work as the Messiah. In light of this, one might expect that Jesus has more important things to do than to stop by and deal with a blind beggar at 85th and Park Avenue. 
Jesus, one might say, has an agenda to save the whole world. So why would he stop to help one person? Jesus is concerned with the, with the macro and not the micro. Some might say, well, it is true as one preacher declares that God is back behind yesterday and up in front of tomorrow and God is older than time and God is senior to eternity and God was before was was as a matter of fact before there was a then or there before there was a when or where there was and is God it's true that God is so wide you can't get around her and so low you can't go beneath her so high that you can't get over God and so deep that you can't figure God out it's true that God is transcendent wonderfully expressed through the soul and gothic structure of this sanctuary but it is also true God is imminent personally present with our God is high but stoops low through the incarnation, divinity taking on the form of the fragility of humanity, Kairos entering Kronos via Kenosis, and we discover that Jesus is just not interested in resisting the socio-political powers of his day, but he also cares clearly for the personal needs of a blind beggar. Jesus does not just love the world, Jesus loves you. Ain't that good news? You may not want to bother God with what you deem to be a little need in light of the vast need of an ever-changing global society. You might be wary of falling prey to individualistic and consumeristic religion. I understand that, but even on his way to his own death, even when the trajectory of his missional theology included a salvific old rugged cross, Jesus focuses on one person's need. Right before he meets the blind beggar, he reminds us that he came not to be served, but to serve. And serve he does. Jesus understands the personal touch of ministry and asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, teacher, this is what I want. Let me see again. Jesus said to him, go your way, for your faith has made you well. Immediately he regains his sight followed him on his way. You, you can see, you can see if you want to see. You can see if you want to see. Seeing matters, and seeing matters must matter before black lives matter and all lives matter. White folks have got to see black folks, got to even want to see black folks. Even sometimes, when we get a little noisy, <laughs> you got to want to see. And we've got to, and all people, we've got to see, we got to see people who look different from us. Yes, and we've got to want yes, to see. Yes, Seeing will change the world.